I'm Wild 267 and you right here tuned in to Where's Wild. I'm right here with the one and only Meek Mills. Now, first of all, congratulations on the success of your album. You came out and you did numbers that we don't see these days. You know, it was just, it's just crazy. It was real, the album was real personal. You got real, you got into it. What is your favorite song on the album? Uh, I don't got a favorite song. I be having favorite songs every different week. Like, it depends on my mood is, how this sound much trauma, going bad. Um, what, what, going bad? You like Poppy? Poppy said going bad. Um, Respect the Game, Championship Song, a lot of them. Thank you about saying, right now you're the soundtrack to the trenches. Me, personally, I listen to all types of music and I'm not judgmental of it. But, yeah. but you... You're really, you really a rapper. You, you really rap. Yeah. I mean, it's different, and I think this is something that the game needed. Now, how do you feel about the state of hip hop right now? Uh, I think a lot of people making good music. It's just that uh, a lot of music. You got a lot of young guys coming up, and they got new sounds to music as always before. There's always new sounds coming up. I just think it always should be, be people that have substance. I like what Twenty One just did. He's like a new sound and artist, but. This album he came out with, he added substance to it and really talked about stuff that had meaning to it. I, th I think, you know, the fact that y'all out here, y'all growing, y'all living life, y'all experiencing new things, y'all tax brackets, y'all going up and that, this, that, third. How did it feel to make the Forbes list? Uh, it felt great. I was I was happy as hell. I, I didn't want to be number 20, but uh, I was happy to be, be a part of the conversation. I'm more into trying to be number one, number two. So, you know, it, it was another just source of inspiration and motivation to make me want to keep climbing up and go to the top. And the fact that you was just, you, you know, you was just in the cell eating chee cheese and all that. Yeah, yeah. that's how right I look at this. Basically, we just in the cell. I got it to the floor right now, but we in King Center best now. I heard a thousand words for toys, you know what I mean? Like, was you, was you, was you like shocked when you, when you came up? Was you shocked that, damn, this is really happening? Like, they yeah. really let me out? Like, yeah, hell yeah. Right, right, I know he's sitting in there. We, uh, you know, I was getting my chess game up. I was getting my... He wouldn't play me. He would never play me. He was too good. I'm like, man, play me, man. Oh, Ron Ron was in the joint. No, Kenny would never play me. So, yeah, Ron Ron was in there with me. Come here real quick, Ron Ron. Come on, come, come over here, man. Stop. All that holly. Come on, baby. No, no, man. Man. Come on, man. This is just, so this is the dude you was playing the chess. Come here, Ron Ron. So they can understand the story. Come here, man. Don't be... Come here. Come stand right here. Let me see you. You've been down a little bit. Let me get Ron Ron here. Go ahead, bit down a little bit so they can see you in the camera. All right, so, so this was your chess partner in jail. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It, it wasn't my chess partner. He was way nicer than me, but right. you know, me and him used to bang it out. Did all you the ever time. beat this boy in jail? Yeah. Did I beat you before? You know no, no, no. Oh, so you just yeah. didn't get it in? No, you know he didn't beat me. So y'all was so we all see the funny thing about this. We all understand this reform, just as reform. Right. I mean, you just got out. You on parole? Ryan Ryan don't look like a Ryan Ryan did twenty. What is it? Twenty five years. He did twenty five. He looked like he only twenty five. So what we talked about so, all day in that drink, but you. Reform, you coming out. Oh, so, yeah, hell yeah, that's what it's all about. So, you did 25? Yeah, 25 years. Parole. You know, and this is the thing we were discussing when we was in there. He was saying what he was going to come out and do. So, he was like, listen, this is what I'm going to do. He did actually what he did, what he said he was going to do. He came out and put it in the play. So, a lot of people benefited from his situation that we all probably don't even recognize. You know what I'm saying? There's so many people that's up in the mountains that didn't get to hear what he was saying down there. Now they benefit from it. They buy their own homes. Doors is opening up. And, and see, the funny thing about what he said is important is that he did 25, I did 20. Yeah. That's 40, that's 45 years between throw two men. Throw me, throw little three in there for throw, me. <laughs> throw me three in there, which is cool. So, so, so you look, you looking at, you looking at 40, you looking at 48 years of incarceration right here. How long, if you don't mind asking, how long you on parole? Well, if I get, if I clear five, they gonna clear me up. All right, well you clear five, I'm on parole to October 29, 2048. Right. So what? So yeah. So 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 the reality is, and I, I wasn't in for murder, but what he's doing is necessary because now it's bringing attention to the people that might don't have a ways, that might don't have the finances, right. and that's necessary. Yeah. That's a real give back. You, and it, it's cool to give back, give back toys. It's cool to give back, but that's the real give back. And so many people in our in our community is affected because they fathers, they uncles, they big brothers, they OGs, they cousins is in prison. Yeah. And they in prison, and the sentencing structure is not on our side. Right. You see what I'm saying? The conversation we had, we was in the same place. It had happened to you and all you're supposed to. Yeah, because you know, you had people like, you know, they got this self hate issue going on, people walking around, even the black seal. Why are they talking about him? Why are they, I'm like, yo, it's not even it's about, about my police. It ain't about me, it's about my situation. Yeah. If this had, whoever it may have been, if this had to take place for people to bring attention to yeah. that, let that take place. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, when I was in there, we I spent. I probably spend seven days a week, probably spend an hour a day with somebody talking about just when I get out or if I do make it out, how to bring attention to what's really going on. Because, you know, growing up in these environments, like, this is why I came back to 
Kingston, a shout out to Eddie Hurt. Um, a lot of these kids growing up, they don't violate these stuff. So going to jail for fucking smoking some weed and getting a 48 violation of a technical violation at 36. Of course, y'all seen it. Yeah. But I've been locked up with so many people. He got two to four for smoking weed violation. He got three to six. You smoke some weed, you probably, what you probably get? If I smoke, I don't know. Uh, some dirty yarns right oh, now. Oh, I'm going back up. Yeah, I gotta go, what I, type of time you probably get? You never know. I'm, I'm be sitting there for a minute. Yeah. I'm be sitting there for a minute, and it's like that's why I'm always like, you know how parole is. It's like you gotta walk, even though I'm, I'm free. I'm still paranoid every day. I'm like, damn, I can't go there. I can't go there. I don't want to go there. I go to the crib, and I'm cool. I locked the door because I'm like, this is the safest place. Because it's like the reality is, I had two armed robberies. I got a 50, 50. I got a, I got a 19 and a half to 52 year sentence. I ain't shoot nobody. None of that. I'm not saying what I did was wrong. I was out of pocket. I was wrong. But it's like, damn, is that real? Did that really happen? Now, what if I wasn't able to come? And what if you wasn't able to come back out normal? How many people was getting, you know, you see people in there? I was telling him before, like, after being in there for so long, you would see somebody that was normal at one point. And to now, they're not even the same. Yeah. You come back out here in society, you don't be the same. We got a word we use in there all day. It's called burnt. Yeah, yeah. Burnt. he burnt right. out. You burnt. He burnt. That means you mentally burnt. Everything is gone because you actually living in the same thing over and over reality waking up eating at the same time going to bed for years and everybody mental can't take that so you know they just go to a state where i don't know i can't even explain burn like i was i was trying to explain to people like i, I know you probably understand it for being here when you're in prison you got to go insane in order to stay sane and when it's time for you to go home you got to deprogram yourself and to reprogram yourself because we in there ryan and we understand that oh there's a lot of stuff going on. I'm really, I'm really not digging it, rather homosexuality, rather people, you know, getting high off of medication. And you gotta be able to say, so it won't mess you up. This is the normal life that I gotta live while I'm in prison. Yeah. And you gotta create because if you're looking at that on a normal eyes and normal mind, you'd be like, you might go crazy. Yeah. You might and you gotta connect. It seems like we gotta connect with outside as much as possible. Like with me, I was an interviewer in there. And when people would come from the free world, like somebody, somebody nephew or someone I might, or they be like, damn, you know my aunt? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know y'all. What's up? And I will every day go to the yard with them just to ask them a thousand questions so I can see what, yeah, they got what? They got Google. What is Google? Yeah. Well, you, you, I know you yeah, see yeah, a yeah. cell phone. You was like, yeah. you're like, wow, this is like magic. I still not work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's what, and it's like, it's hard for the dude that go through that and come back. He mentally disabled, and now he got to try to figure out how to get a job, how to fill out an application. How to talk to people? You gotta get debrief. Like, you gotta get debrief. I was just talking to a person that man. You come home, it's not like everybody think that because you was away and you, know, you come back out. It's a whole different thing. It's pretty much like I don't like to compare it to like the surgeries and all that. But you gotta get debrief. You gotta get back yeah. to act, to society and figure out how it is out here. And because you know how to be, I was just telling a person the other day. Like I knew how to be a man in there. But then you out here, how you make that transition to come back from here to here and be a man, get a job, take care of bills, take care of family, spend time with family. So all that stuff you all get back used to. And people don't understand it. They think you step right back to it. It's not like, it's not that simple. So being in there, it has that effect on Really and my favorite part about your John Wallows when you be addressing the young boys like from the area we from everybody like killing and yeah. they not understanding what's going on like I grandma just grandma just had a life sentence. A lot of people you could pretend or you could be emotionally caught up and act as if you want to be a killer. I hate the word demon when people say I'm yeah. a demon. That's just one of the things I just hate. Um, when you actually make a wrong decision like that, you get caught up in that type of situation, and then you up in the mountain somewhere, you got a life sentence, or you would never touch a refrigerator door again, or you would never touch a steering wheel again. You destroy somebody's family, you got life. Uh, if you got kids, they ain't got no father no more. If you killed them, they kids ain't got no father no more. You basically just bring in, like, you, you expand and hate into... Uh, the city, and I, I, I try to do my conversations with the youngest that I know and the people I come in contact with, but I know it's way deeper than that, uh, to a space where we gotta go to. I even always talk to, like, people uh, in, in the state of Pennsylvania about doing a program with, like, kids, uh, younger men that's coming up actually can connect to the men that's in yeah. for without having to connect there when you coming through with a life sentence, you know what I'm saying? Because there's no connection between men and the young men coming up in Philadelphia. I ain't really had no connection with no men coming up. We got Eddie Hurt right here. I'm not just saying this because he's right here. The first person to take me to the studio, uh, get me out the streets. It was probably Eddie Hurt and, and uh, Tyrone Crawley. Uh, he was actually a pal. I thought about that yesterday, too. I thought about actually like trying to get funding for pile centers again because that was a part of the process. Like 
I sent them like this, save my life. Kids, I had something to do. When they say like, uh, kids need places to go after school and shit like that. This is one of the places they had boxing here. They had school here, they had basketball. The pile had ping pong, pool, they had a computer room. Uh, they had a weight room, so you know, that was our hangout after mm -hmm. school. And then we know we had real positive role models at the same time. We was caught up in the street, but still we had like a common sense size to it. Somebody, a man that actually taught us morals and taught us what to do. Now, you know, you got young boys, they going a wild style. I see some videos, you got 15 young boys on the corner, they 14, 15 years old. They all got guns on them. I'm like, who the hell is y'all going to war with? Is y'all going to war with Osama Bin Laden? Even if you had a gun, we had like one, two guns around. Y'all got 20 guns around? Mm -hmm. For what? Somebody gonna hurt somebody for no reason. And uh, I just wanted to address that. That's my favorite part. I can't, I, every time you post them on Instagram, that's the shit I watch 10 times. Like when you yeah. be talking like, yo, y'all just shot a little girl. Y'all just did that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Me and Wallo, uh, who else was it? Jim Gotti. Uh, yeah. All the people that helped out with the lady house, yeah, yeah, yeah. lady house, yeah, you know, uh, that was, that, that was good. Get, that didn't even get publicized. Yeah, I DM'd him, I DM'd me, I said, listen, because I didn't know. Can you tell a story? Yeah, Cause well, what happened was, this This what happened, what happened was, that's the morning I came out snapping because on Halloween night, uh, two <coughs> kids got shot, a little girl and a little boy got shot, and the sister, who kids they was, she had to re live, re you know, get out of that area, so she wound up living in the basement of her family, her family house, and it was like, I went down there because the girl, sister, I know there's a chef. She's like, I need you to help. I need your help. Well, I, know I need you to. I said, what's up? She said, we got to get these people some money. So I go down there. I, I couldn't believe that they was living on a full time. So I reached out to me. I mean, him, big business, PNB Rock. And, it, you know, me said, what you need me to do? You know what I mean? Before I knew it, I mean, he got his people was in contact with them. Big business got him a house, got him a spot to live. And it was just like, I was so happy because I was like, damn. I was happy and I was sad because I had to see the condition of them kids. The fact that, hold up. You mean to tell me somebody shot these kids? That was that was just that just blew my mind because I understand yesterday is over, but it's a, it's rules and regulations to the street culture. If you're gonna play a part of that, you in the streets to make money, not headlines. But I also process the fact that a lot of officials, a lot of referees of the street culture, they dead in jail or they somewhere removed from that element because it's so violent. It became violent to where though nobody want no money, they just want to commit crimes because. It seemed like it was a turn to me. I'm not blaming nobody, but like, I see when Chicago came and they was giving up that drill music and everything was, I'm gonna push you down, I got 30 on them, I'm gonna boom boom, and educated people because there was nobody else to get them that education there. So the drill music educated them, I'm gonna drop you, I'm gonna do this, and that became thorough. Now you can say, oh, he a shooter, and he's glamorized, and he's looked at like the dude that got money used to be looked at. So it's like, oh, yeah, he a demon, he a shooter. So dudes, is, the culture is taking that. So now, dude, like, I'm going to be a demon. That's I said. I've never seen it going with 20 bodies, get a new Ferrari. You know what I'm saying? I've never seen a demon in the bros' race. I've never seen it. And you see it on the other side. When you see a dude breaking down pills, trying to snort some pills in jail, a young boy because he's trying to escape the reality that he got 60 to 120 years for shooting up a corner. The people that he thought he was riding for, now he riding for. No, ain't nobody around for you. It's an illusion out there. It's a, it's a big illusion, and it's like, at the end of the day, the dude that's gonna be on your stand is your ex-man, and your mom gonna be sitting behind you with a defendant chair crying because he used to sleep at the house with y'all. She used to make him peanut butter and jellies, and he like, I gotta get back to Keisha, nigga. I ain't, I mean, I, listen, man, you know you, sh you shot the bull. I ain't, I, I got caught with a gun in the package, but I ain't going to do that five to 10, that's why and that's the reality. I'm coming out with a book too in 2019. Is I, I never made the name of it or like uh, I just know what it's gonna be based off. It's gonna be based off updating your rule book of what you claim what the streets is, what it really is, and what you thought it was or what we thought it was growing up. And basically like letting people know the odds against them. Like if you live this type of life, you have a thousand percent chance of going to a graveyard. If you make moves like this, you got an eighty percent chance of getting put in a jail cell or a graveyard. When you're doing this, this that, this holds this amount of time. This is what you're going against. This is your chance to get in the way and really like breaking down the street effect to all the young boys. Just so uh, if you happen to do be in prison, or you just read books, and you're, you're in a free world where you can sit down and actually take something like some shit that can inform you how to survive through what we're coming up in. So, uh,